Hey everybody, today we're gonna to be talking about a time I didn't get paid for two months. And uh, the context is I've been financially independent since I was 17 years old. I dropped out of high school, moved to LA, paid my own place for my own coin. Through YouTube, I started a social media agency. We were helping brands, basically work with creators on YouTube, TikTok, all that fun stuff. And like back then I wasn't making any money, but now, you know, we work with brands like Netflix, um, Warner Media recently, stuff like that. It's been really <laughs> crazy. Even though we make money as a company, there's months where uh, people don't pay us. And <laughs> I'm gonna be talking about like how I survive those months. And if you're a freelancer and you're kind of dealing with some financial instability, I hope this video is helpful because we all get, we all go through it. So uh, let's just dive right into it. So how the fuck Jay did it? I not got paid for, for two months. Cause you might be wondering like, don't you have a lawyer? Like, don't you have a contract to protect you? The answer is yes. Like you can have the best lawyer in the world. I pay my attorney some good coin to make sure we're protected. But the truth is, and my lawyer even told me this, we do have an agreement in place with all our brands and clients, but he's like, Jade, no matter how good an agreement is, a client can try their best, you know, they can respect it, but sometimes things are not guaranteed. Like life is just not guaranteed. Like, let me just explain the story. So this is about one year ago. We're working with a client, let's name them Orange, okay? <laughs> so Orange hired our agency to make a content piece for TikTok with a creator. I'm not gonna name names, but let's just say Orange was a giant company, a giant conglomerate brand, okay? Our agency, was tasked to hire this creator. Our budget was $100,000. Like this is a huge budget. Now the issue is they gave us a very tight deadline. They told us X8, you need to finish this project in three weeks. And uh, at the time it was very doable, but it didn't allow a lot of room to negotiate because typically what we do, right, is we sign the agreement, then we start and then we produce the video and then it's done. But for this project to specifically work, we had to start the agreement while the creator was starting the content just because it was a huge piece of work. It was a lot of editing, a lot of um, a lot of back and forth. So I told the client, hey, like we need to work on this agreement ASAP. And this creator was comfortable doing it with one condition. They were comfortable moving forward with starting the video, even though their agreement wasn't in place. If there was basically a guarantee that they would get paid up front. So basically, usually most brands, most conglomerate companies, will pay you net 30 days, net 45, net 60 sometimes, which basically means you don't get paid until one month to two months later after you produce the video, after it's done. We negotiated our terms. We get paid up front upon signature of agreement. Then the next 50% is after the content is done, net 30. This was a battle. You would think getting paid in a 60 day time frame was reasonable. It is not. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, it's a reasonable ask. It's just, it's, it's very hard to enforce. You would think, oh, Perfect, they're just gonna pay you 50% of it. So like that's 50K. That's not how it works. So basically, <laughs> once we got the approval, our agreement said we would get 50% of the money upon contract signature. By the time it's ready for signature, the person that needs to sign it is usually not the lawyer. It's usually not the social media person. It's someone above in the department of Orange. Now this person was hard to reach because they also have a bunch of papers to sign. So we were like in the pipeline for a few days. So it's been already two and a half weeks, keep in mind, about this agreement process. The creator is still making the video at this time, but we don't have a guarantee that we're gonna get paid, right? But anyways, we finally got the video signed. It's approved. We're gonna get paid 50%. You might be wondering, cool, you get the money, right? No. Basically, you don't just get paid through PayPal as a vendor for a big company like Orange. You have to submit an invoice in their payment processing system. Companies have like something called like a payment run and they usually do at the end of the month, sometimes at the end of a week. It's just, it's just so coincidentally, we weren't in their payment run for the first 50%. Like we were like, we just missed it by a few days. So we have to wait like a, basically 20 days until we got the first half of the payment. So you can see like from the first day, which is like contracting, getting agreement signed, that's two weeks three, like basically another three weeks to get paid from the first 50% and another like three weeks on top of that to get the other half. It took around two and a half months. Now we did get paid, everyone did get paid, but it was just really tough because, you know, brands wait to the last minute of the contract to pay you guys. You know, I get it, it's for, for cash flow reasons, but it's just still, you know, it doesn't take away how frustrating it is for us as a small business, but also, 
contractors that are a part of it, like, you know, I have to have really tough conversations to people saying, you know, hey, the payment's coming, it's just running late. And, you know, sometimes I actually have to accelerate it and like I have to use my own payment to pay out the creators and stuff sometimes, which is really tough because if you don't, you know, if you're not prepared for it, sometimes you have to spend 20, 30K on like advances. But, you know, the deal with Orange was resolved. It was a really good campaign but it was definitely very stressful. So if I were you know, to read it a situation, I probably wouldn't take that a project like that again. Like I would be like, you know, we have to have the agreement first before we start. And I've been doing that since, like my agency has always been pretty good ever since that occurrence with Orange, you know, to be like, hey, money first so that everyone can get paid on time. It's just gonna help every person in this, in this um, agreement. The people of these companies aren't bad. They're not bad people. It's just the whole system is, not very advanced. So, you know, inherently I don't judge these people. It's just a really tough situation we were in. Now you might be wondering, Jade, how did you survive without getting paid for two and a half months? Because a hundred K is a lot of money. And I still had to pay people. I still have expenses. So these are the things that I learned and I'm going to share them right now. So hopefully if you're also self-employed, it can help you navigate through these cold months. Okay. The first thing, and this is obvious is to have a lawyer. <laughs> I have a very good lawyer. We had to end up sending a demand letter, which is basically when you're like, hey, pay up. Um, and I pay my lawyer a very good coin for this. So, you know, we were able to enforce some deadlines, but it's very hard to write that language if you're not legally advanced. If you can't afford a lawyer, you might have to read your own contracts, but the minute you make money, save up for one. All right, the second thing. A cash buffer is essentially money you put in your checking account at all times. And if the money goes below it, you like refill it essentially. The thing about a cash buffer is it depends on how much you need, right? So like if you're a personal freelancer, maybe you don't have any other expenses. I always, you know, first started with a cash buffer of around a thousand dollars. I know some people only keep like $3,000 in their checking account, even though they have like a, a lot of expenses. I don't know. Personally for me, I just do around like seven to 10 K just because I just feel more comfortable that way, but everybody's cash buffer is different. Now, once you have a cash buffer, this is really great because say you don't get paid for two months, you can use your cash buffer, right? You can obviously use as much in your personal account, but you can pull out, um, in this m money and you know that it's like, there's no debt. It's going to be safe to use. Now, if you run out of the cash buffer and this happened to me, you want to utilize a credit line. Credit cards are not bad. I never knew that. I thought credit cards were like evil. If you use it, you're basically gonna like owe so much more money to people. In reality, credit cards are super, super good for you because as long as you're not over extending yourself and having way too many responsibilities, it's there for you as a business. So personally for me, I'm 20 years old. I've only had a company for three, basically two years. If I run out of my cash buffer, I can use my credit cards. You don't want to exceed 30% of your credit line because it will hurt your you know, finance score. It's called a FICO score. That is like a good resort if I don't get paid for two and a half months. And thank God I had a credit line and thank God I had a cash buffer because that definitely helped me survive when I didn't get paid. Now the third thing, and this is called an emergency fund. And usually you want to keep this in a savings account or a high interest savings account. But basically this is money where if shit hits the fan, you have money for yourself to keep going. Um, so basically you take your monthly personal costs, so say it's $3,000 a month times however months you need. So like say five months, and this is called an emergency fund. So three times five is $15,000. Now, usually when you have these three layers, you most likely don't need all three because it's quite a long timeline you need. Like for example, for two and a half months, I really only use my cash fund and a little bit of the credit line, but I always pay my credit line in full every month. Like once I use it, I try my best to pay it off. Now, sometimes it's not perfect. You can't pay it all the way and that's okay. Like if you have a balance on your credit card, it's not good, but don't feel ashamed. Like you're like the thing that I've learned when I didn't get paid for three months, you're already going through so much stress. Do not shit on yourself for like being unproductive or not doing enough because sometimes you just have to wait it out. A lot of problems in business solve itself. Just be very patient. So my next tip after all that is just to save as much as you can because you're going to maybe in the first two years, not have any money for savings. I know a lot of people and including me, when I was first starting to make money as my own business owner, I didn't have money for savings. I was spending everything back on my business. I was spending everything back to pay my rent, to turn on the lights. And it was so hard because I think, you know, I wanted nicer things. I wanted like a down payment on a car or things like that when I was like 16, 17, but you just don't have that in the beginning and that's okay. But just try to make an effort to save 
$50 a week or $10 a week and put that into a high interest savings account or just put it into an investment. You don't touch this money and it just sits there. This is not an emergency fund. This is not a cash buffer or credit line. This is just money that you put for your financial future. For me, I, I use crypto. Like that's like, that's what I am most comfortable with. I'm very understanding. I have a crypto company called NF Treehouse. Everyone's different. You can do stocks, you can do whatever. And um, might I add, this is not financial advice. So do your own research. I find it super helpful to save as early as you can. I didn't start saving really to last year when I was like 19. So if you don't have money, it's okay. Sometimes you have to invest everything you got and you might not have money to do savings, but try your best. It's okay if it takes time. It took me a while. Do not beat yourself up for it. All right, so I hope this video was somehow helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching. Shout out to the comment winner. If you wanna be the next comment winner, comment below. I recently moved, so house for soon. If you guys like the setup, let me know in the comments and I'll see you guys later.